All right, guys, so here we are on my low-end PC. I've just done a fresh install of Windows 11. If you're wondering what the specs are on this computer, then I'll just go ahead and show you them right now. And here we are. So these are the specs. We've got an i5-4460 CPU at 3.2 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM, and we're running integrated graphics. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys the best tips for optimizing Windows 11 on low-end PCs for gaming and for increased performance. If you're new around here, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, since I have installed a fresh version of Windows 11, we've got all this kind of bloatware and stuff on here. But another problem is we're not activated. If I just have a look here, as you can see, we have not got a Windows 10 license key, which is a big problem. And if you guys want to solve this problem, I'll give you guys a little trick. And that's where this video sponsor B&H Software comes in. Are you tired of seeing the activate Windows watermark down the bottom right of your screen? Can you not change your desktop wallpaper or customize Windows in any way because you haven't got an activated copy? Well, look no further than bnhsoftware.com. BNH Software is a website that sells software keys at really good prices. You can get a Windows 11 license for only $17, as well as keys for Windows 10, Microsoft Office 2021 Home and Business, and you can get it for both PC and Mac OS. All keys are delivered immediately upon purchase. It's well trusted and it will give you a big discount compared to buying keys from other vendors. And I've got a special deal for you guys. If you use the coupon code NOTREDAN at checkout, you get 10% off on all products on BNH Software. Make sure to check out BNH Software in the description down below. And thank you to BNH Software for sponsoring this video. All right, so the first tweak that we're going to do is we're going to disable our startup applications. So press Control Alt Delete on your keyboard. Go to your task manager here. If yours looks like this, just press on more details to get yours looking like mine. And now we need to go to startup. And as you can see, these are applications that will open as soon as you turn on your computer. So the more you have here, the slower it's going to be to turn on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to disable the ones that we don't really need. I'm going to leave stuff like Windows Security, have that enabled. Cortana, you just can't disable, which is really annoying. But yeah, you guys will probably have loads here. This is a fresh install, so I'm not going to have that many. But yeah, just go through, disable your startup apps, and your computer should start up a lot quicker. Now, by default, Windows 11 comes with loads of pre-installed apps and bloatware that you might just not want. If we go to all apps here, there's loads of stuff here that I'm just not going to use, so we might as well get rid of it. Now to debloat Windows 11, what we're going to use is we're going to use a tool called This Is Windows 11. You can get that by searching for it on Google. It's the first one that comes up, should be the GitHub link. Just go on that. And then we're going to go ahead and download it directly from GitHub, so just press on this. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the .zip here, so click on that. And it should download. But yeah, just go ahead and right click on it, show more options, extract all. All right, so now we've extracted that, we can go ahead and open up This Is Windows 11. And this is it, it's its own unique application. So this is actually a really good application here. So what you can do is you can go ahead and press check here. And this will basically scan your computer for your settings that you're currently using. And it recommends settings that you should use. So here we have here, 56 issues need to be fixed, just a recommendation. And you don't even need to go through and untick all these boxes or tick all these boxes. It does it all for you. Just press fix issues and there you go. Just press Y if the Windows terminal comes up. Press enter, let it do its thing. And this is it. This is our optimized Windows 11 thanks to this is Windows 11. So as you can see, my taskbar has gone a bit weird here. I don't know why they've done that. Loads of really cool optimizations that have been applied here, which we'll go into later. If we go here, we can remove our applications here. These are all the apps on the left here that have come pre-installed with my version of Windows 11. So what you can do is just select, for example, Bing Weather, and then just move selected to the recycle bin. And then once you're done, just press empty bin, and this should hopefully remove all of the pre-installed apps. Let's just hope they don't come back with another Windows update. All right, that looks pretty good. So I've selected some Microsoft pre-installed rubbish here. So then just go ahead and press empty bin, press yes, and that should start uninstalling all of our pre-installed bloatware that we've selected. Okay, there we go. So now if we go to our start menu here and have a look and see if we can see these apps. And already just scrolling down my all apps here, this is looking so much cleaner already. Wow, I've left the Xbox stuff because we're going to be having a look at that a little bit later. But yeah, I don't see any of this stuff in my applications anymore, which is really cool. There's also a section here where you can install apps that they think you'll love. So you can just go through here 
and you can install applications. It's a bit like Nine Night, you can download Firefox, Discord, all this kind of essential stuff here. So yeah, it's pretty cool that they've added all this. You can just install applications pretty easily with the Windows Package Manager without having to go through all the individual websites and downloading a load of installers. You can just do it nice and quickly from here. You can also automate tasks with Power UI. I'm not gonna go into this, but what we could do is we could enable app dark mode here. We can remove OneDrive, which is another thing I really wanna do. And oh, that's pretty cool. So other people have written these scripts. They give credit to them here and you can just run them, which is quite cool. If we go to the next section here, we can create our own tweaks with extensions. So yeah, it's a really powerful application. This is Windows 11. We're probably barely scratching the surface with this little section on the video here. But yeah, I've just gone ahead and I've run some tweaks, uninstalled some apps and yeah, already Windows 11 is looking good. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is our app settings. So you can do that by going to settings here, just Windows key settings and then going to apps here. And we're just going to go through these and disable all the ones that we don't need. So if we go to apps and features here, let's start from the top. You can uninstall applications that you don't want from here. But yeah, if you've got loads of stuff installed on your computer, just go through this every once in a while and that should clean up your computer and keep it running smoothly. Next up, we've got default apps. This is all kind of personal preference, really. But if you've got apps that you would rather use, for example, I'd rather use Google Chrome as my web browser, but Microsoft makes that incredibly difficult. You can just go ahead and set default here. And yeah, I think that's done it. We've also got offline maps here, which I'd recommend turning off. If we go to apps for websites here, go to that, turn off all of this. If we go to our video playback here, what you might want to do is enable optimize for video quality rather than battery life. I'm using a desktop right now, so it doesn't really matter, but do be aware if you're doing this on a laptop, it will reduce your battery. You can also go into HDR here and enable that if you've got a HDR enabled monitor. We can also go to advanced display settings here and you can change your refresh rate. So if you've got a 144 Hertz monitor, definitely make sure you select that. I've just selected 60 Hertz here, which is the monitor I'm using right now. So yeah, just make sure this is all looking good. You're running at the right resolution and the right refresh rate so that your games and video content will look nice when you're on your computer. Now we're going to move into the gaming section here. And first of all, I'm going to disable Xbox Game Bar. It's pretty annoying. It's pretty intrusive when you're playing a game. It comes up and everything. So I'd recommend turning that off. I'd also recommend turning off captures as well. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card and you use something like GeForce Now, this is basically just like Windows own version of that. So if you have these two both on, they're competing with each other and it uses up a lot of system resources. So I recommend turning this off. And another thing we're going to make sure we've actually got enabled is game mode here. This feature is actually getting increasingly better as Windows updates go on. So I'm going to enable this and yeah, it just optimizes your PC for gaming and it's built right into Windows. So yeah, why not? Another thing is if you are a gamer is go into your mouse settings. This is pretty essential here. Go to additional mouse settings here and make sure under pointer options here that you've unchecked enhanced pointer precision. This isn't really an optimization. Well, it kind of is. But yeah, this basically reduces your input lag. So I'd highly recommend this if you're a competitive gamer. Make sure you have this turned off. Next up, we're going to go to the good old control panel, which hasn't changed since Windows 7. And we're going to go over to the search box here and type in power options. And we're going to change our power plan to high performance or whatever it says on your computer. Make sure it's the highest one. Like I said, if you're on a laptop, this will reduce your battery life. But if you're on a desktop, why not use higher performance? You can just go to change plan settings here. And yeah, we've enabled high performance. So as it says here, it favors performance, but might use more energy. But yeah, perfect for gaming and getting the most performance out of your computer. Next up, you might want to go to your graphics control panel here. This is normally in the system tray down here. If you've got Nvidia or Intel or AMD, just go ahead and open it up here. Go to graphics options, go to graphics properties. So I've got Intel HD graphics in this computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the 3D section here and I'm going to change the settings here to performance. By default, it's on balance, but I want the most performance out of my graphics as possible when I'm gaming. So I've put that on performance here. Other graphics control panels will have similar settings to this. You just got to make sure you find it and enable it here. So yeah, I've selected that to favor performance now. So we're just going to go ahead and apply that. So yeah, if you've got Intel HD graphics control panel like me, that is pretty much all you need to do in here. 
But if you're using AMD or Nvidia, then I recommend checking out another video on how to get the best performance out of your graphics cards. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to this PC, go to options, properties. Then we're going to go to advanced system settings right here. We're going to go to performance. We're going to go to settings here and we're going to make sure we adjust windows for best performance, as you can see here. Now, by default, this is on adjust for best appearance, but I think because of this is Windows 11 and running all the tweaks through this is Windows 11 has actually selected best performance for us. Make sure if it isn't selected already, click on adjust for best performance, press apply and OK. Now, if we go ahead and select all of these options here, so this is going to make Windows look pretty ugly. For example, when I drag around this box here, there's no nice animation or anything like that, which kind of sucks. Fonts also look a little bit weird now on the desktop. But yeah, it does what it says on the tin, basically. It doesn't make Windows look the best, but it adjusts it for the best performance. And that's what you want if you want to get the maximum performance out of your system. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to disable transparency. I think this is Windows 11's done that for us already. But if you haven't used that, just go to personalization here. Go to colors and make sure you have transparency effects turned off. If we turn it on here, as you can see our taskbar, we can vaguely see our desktop background through there and also in our settings. But yeah, have that turned off. It uses far less graphical resources. And if you can't personalize your desktop, then you're going to have to go to BNH software and get yourself a Windows key. Next thing we're going to do is go to our start menu and type in system configuration. So once you're in system configuration here, select your timeout and set it to three. By default, it should be about 30 seconds, but yeah, have it at three. I think that's the lowest it will go. Press apply and OK. I'm just going to exit without restart for now. But what that basically does is it reduces your boot time, basically. So 30 seconds on startup is added by default when you first turn on your computer. So if we set that to the lowest it will possibly go, then our computer should boot up a lot quicker. And the last thing we're going to do is some storage settings. So just go to settings here, navigate to storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable storage sense here. Just turn that on. And yeah, basically it keeps Windows running smoothly by automatically cleaning up temporary and app files. This is a really good feature. I believe it was added in a later version of Windows 10, but I'm really glad Windows has started to look after itself now because before we had to go through our temp folders, delete all the stuff manually and start clogging up our computer. But it's really good that Windows can now do this automatically using storage sense. So yeah, make sure you have this turned on and your computer should hopefully look after itself. Speaking of temporary files, if we go into it here, as you can see here, we've actually, despite being a fresh install of Windows 11, we've actually got quite a bit of files here that we need to remove. So just go ahead and press remove, continue, and that should delete our temporary files. And now hopefully with storage sense enabled, it should keep this right down. So yeah, I think that's gonna do it for now. This is how I would optimize Windows 11 in 2022 for performance and gaming. Let me know if you wanna see a part two of this with more tweaks and tips. And yeah, leave a like on this video if you found it useful. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.